NBC4 presents Positively Black. I got plum grind juice back in there, my Brita, Smart Balance milk, cottage cheese. I eat a lot of cottage cheese. Consider this a kitchen makeover. Dolores Jordan's refrigerator in the Bronx looks like the snapshot of smart and healthy living now. But not long ago, it was a fridge filled with the types of foods that became hazardous to her health. As an Afro-American black person, woman, I feel that it's a great challenge because I am from the South. I'm used to eating different type of food. You know. Decades of downing that soul food diet without exercise or any other foods in the mix took its toll, literally weighing down any chance Dolores would have at longevity. I found out I had diabetes in 1998. When you're a diabetic and your sugar was up you, and you walk, each leg feel like they got 500 pounds. That's the way it feels. If Dolores' ailments sound all too familiar, there's a reason for that. Her health history is one doctors say is being echoed at an alarming rate in black and Latino communities throughout New York City. So a team from four local hospitals is staging a medical intervention targeting two key neighborhoods. The South Bronx and Harlem are still two of our neighborhoods with um, highest rates of diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, cancer. I mean, unfortunately, kind of name it, those, those are still the, 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 the crux of the issues in those two populations. Dr. Mary Charlson is the director of Orbit, obesity-related behavioral intervention trials. But instead of focusing on facts and figures with other doctors, she's formed a team of nutritionists, sociologists, even religious leaders, and others in Harlem and the South Bronx, conducting a study called Small Changes and Lasting Effects. What's astonishing um, is that if you look at current data, 46% of minority African American and Latino children are overweight by the age of three. What we're testing are uh, simpler strategies to integrate into uh, daily life that don't involve the level of sacrifice but do involve approaches to mindful eating. The goal is for those small changes to be made with nearly 500 participants over the next couple of years and at no point will the D word, meaning diet, ever be used. I don't consider it a diet at all. I think it's a lifestyle change because my pastor teach us that our body is our temple. And you want to put good things in your temple. Yet for every success, the Orbit team is faced with another set of unique challenges. Access is an issue. You know, a number of our groups have talked about lack of access to fresh fruits and vegetables. And then, you know, being on the clinical side, we often say, well, it doesn't have to be fresh fruits and vegetables. Let's try canned. Let's try dried. Let's try frozen. And cultural acceptance of a bigger body being viewed as healthy is being addressed as well. If you're overweight and you're able to run a marathon, then that's, that's a big difference between, I think, being overweight and you can't go up the subway stairs. And we're not necessarily targeting them to be, again, you know, this certain size. It's really just being fit in the size that you're in. Dolores found strength in numbers, undergoing her health transformation with members of her South Bronx church, even the pastor. I am excited. I told them I'm in this for the long run because our community needs it. And as they all make small changes thanks to workshops and clinical meetings, they're more than happy to celebrate the lasting health effects being introduced into their lives. I feel great. I have energy. And it's a good thing. For Positively Black, I'm Tracy Strain. This has been a public affairs presentation of NBC4. Positively Black.